Hello and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and I'm so excited to be back with you today. I have something very special that I've been trying out for a few months and I want to share it with you. So a few months ago, some sweet, sweet lady from What A View Farm reached out to me through email and on Instagram and asked if I would be willing to try her product out for a few months and give her some feedback. And y'all, I have been using this. Well, let's see, the card that she sent uh, has Thanksgiving, it's so cute. I think that is adorable, it looks like she made this. It's so cute, it has a turkey on it. So I've been using this probably since October or November. And I love it. If you watched our holiday gift guide, then this particular product was in our gift guide and I said we would do, be doing a review video and here it is. I could not wait to share this with you. So this is the alpaca pressing mat. It's just called Paca pressing mat. And I have the 15 by 15 size that uh, Sue sent me. She is a wonderfully sweet lady. I'm gonna tell you about her, her family, the uh, alpacas that she has, and just their really cute little farm. So I have been working with the 15 by 15 size, and you can see it is well loved in its bag. There are little strings of uh, thread everywhere. I've made an entire quilt with it so far and pressed several stitching pieces. And then if you get the Creative Notions box, we actually got a smaller size of a Paca pressing mat uh, in a subscription box. And her and Vicky have been working side by side together. And that's actually how Sue got into contact with me was through Vicky. And so this is very, very exciting and I'm so glad to share this with you. I've made some notes so that I make sure and don't leave anything out. And um, oh my goodness, you guys are just absolutely going to love this. So Sue is from What A View Farm. She raises, her and her family raise high-end Kiko goats. They have dairy goats. They have some Dexter mini cows and Scottish Highland cattle as well. So they've got quite the farm at uh, their house. They are officially kind of a retirement home for older female alpaca. And what this means is they love to give these older female alpaca, kind of a retirement home, a relaxed setting. There are no males allowed at this retirement home and these alpaca are between 18 and 21 years old and it's just a place for them to rest and relax and I know Sue loves on them. It just sounds like she really cares for them and um, the process itself in making these packa pressing mats as I've read about it from her is super, super interesting. So actually alpaca farmers and ranchers can't make a living just off of the fiber from those animals. And it's important to note that this is fiber. It's not fleece and it's not wool. Those come from sheep. This is fiber that's coming from the alpaca. Uh, they sell Korea, which are young alpaca, and some travel and show their animals and some have maybe like a small farm style fibers and yarns. Okay, so the fiber that actually goes into making these mats is a different, for lack of better term, grade. If the fiber that went into making these mats goes into something like a yarn, it would just be too scratchy. So these farmers are actually having a really hard time selling that grade of of fiber. So Paca Pressing Mat is giving these farmers the opportunity to make income to help feed their animals and to shear them. The shearing process alone is so expensive per alpaca that this is helping them be able to care deeply for their alpaca. So this is kind of a fantastic kind of um, care for process and I, I love the story behind this. You can read a lot more on their website about it too. So like I said, alpaca is a fiber. It's not a fleece or wool, those are sheep. And Sue and her family have actually um, done a wonderful job and they have invested in a trademark in this. And here is why they've invested in that trademark. They want you to know as the consumer when you go to purchase it and it has the trademark that you're getting the real thing, that you're really getting that alpaca fiber, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So 
a couple of things I want to talk about with this. I'm just holding up the smaller one because it's easier to show. I'm going to, in just a moment, kind of press a cross stitch pattern and a quilt block so that you can see how well it does. Now, I, in the past, have used a regular ironing board. On this channel, we have made a pressing board out of an Ikea cabinet door. I have used wool mats before. I cannot stand the smell of them. They're fantastic, but you can't use any products or steam or anything on those. And so we're gonna talk about that just in a little bit. So I have been using this and I have not moved to anything else. Uh, I've made an entire quilt with my 15 by 15 size. If you all saw the lollipop quilt that I made, that was uh, completely, pressed and everything with the bigger aqua alpaca mat. And so you want to make sure just like you're pressing any other type of quilt block, uh, you don't want to push and glide. You want to press on top of that is super, super important. And we'll get into that more when you see the top down view of this. Uh, it, this really helps to stabilize uh, your piecing. Especially that's important when you're pressing triangles on the bias, things like that. It helps to stabilize because it is going to grab your fabric. And I wish I had a piece of fabric laying here. You'll see, and I'll hold it up maybe when we're top down, but you would see it wouldn't fall off. It really grabs the fabric. The best thing I think about this is you can use your starches like best press. You can use that. You can use steam. You can use whatever you need to to get a, a better press out of this. And so I think that's phenomenal. And the reason that you can use best press or other favorite starches is because this is hand washable. Now they do recommend that you use a product called Beyond Clean. Um, Beyond Clean Soap, and uh, we actually got a sample of that in the Creative Notions box with this size, and you just hand wash it through that, don't dry it, just lay it to dry. And I think that's phenomenal. So that's why you're able to use starches on this, and why maybe you're not able to use starches on other uh, wool mats or something like that, because they are not hand washable. So the other thing that's really, really important, um, in the Creative Notions bag, we always get this wonderful, like reusable bag. These are phenomenal and they're handmade and wonderful. When you buy a PACA pressing mat, it's gonna come in a plastic bag like this. Our Creative Notions one came in that great reusable bag. You want to keep your pressing mat inside its bag and here's why. It's going to protect it uh, it's going to, if you have cats or uh, other animals, it's going to attract them to that just like the wool mat would. And so this is going to protect it. It's kind of its suitcase for that and it just keeps it nice and uh, clean. And so when I'm done with it, I do let it completely cool off because it does get very, very warm. Uh, I let it completely cool off and then I store it right here and it just goes, just goes next to my desk. So that is really, really important as you're thinking through that. Before we get into the pressing of projects or anything like that, I do want to say this is sustainable. It is eco-friendly. It is US, uh, USA small fiber, small farm fiber. That's a tongue twister there. Uh, it is washed in Michigan. And the cool thing is it's washed in a hundred year old family uh, processing plant, which I think is so fun that this is such a family business and it's, I don't know, just the story behind it, y'all. You have to go to their website. We'll link everything down below. It's called packapressing.com. The story behind these little alpacas, I feel so close. I just think it's so adorable. And I love how we truly are caring for these alpacas. Um, they do use the Beyond Clean Soap, so keep that in mind as you are thinking about purchasing your uh, alpaca mat. And then it is felted, finished, and shipped from Mid-Missouri, which is where What of You Farm is, uh, where that is located. And let me just tell you, Sue is so incredibly, incredibly sweet. She has been there to answer questions for me. She has given me so much information on their farm, on the process, on the alpacas themselves. So this pack of pressing mat, I have yes absolutely started to love it for what it's been doing in my pressing and in my preparation to finish cross stitch patterns and to finish quilts um 
but just knowing the story behind it and the family that's putting forth effort into making these things is fantastic and I've really enjoyed learning about that. So without further ado, let's press a quilt block, let's press a cross stitch pattern and kind of look at our stitches. Okay, so let's take a look at this wonderful mat and you can see mine is like super loved. <laughs> I have strings everywhere. Um, there are two sides to this mat, but I think, I think, Sue was saying that you need to kind of decide which is the top and which is the bottom when you're pressing. You don't want to flip it back and forth to uh, distort it at all. You want to keep the same pressing side each time. Uh, and there's a reason for that. She was explaining to me that it is the heat that's going to stay to the top of the mat to get a more crisp, clean line. So I've got two projects right here. I've got a cross stitch project. This is Snow Village. Uh, this is piece number two that I have finished stitching and I have not pressed out yet. So I have done several pressing projects already with uh, this mat. And let me tell you, it does not flatten my stitches at all and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So this is Snow Village. This is a cross stitch piece that I finished. And then I have a quilt block that was hanging on my uh, design wall. I made this a year ago when we were talking about this type of quilt star and using this. But my seams are going every which direction and I need to fix that. So I want to show you how well this pressing mat does at helping you stabilize this because you can see there is a lot of bias seams here. And so a lot of room for distortion. And so I want to show you how well this grabs that and really changes it. So. Let's do that one first. And this is the starch that I choose to use. This is just faultless uh, regular starch. And I really, I really like it. And I, Sue says it's totally fine to use on the alpaca mat because it's uh, hand washable. So I'm gonna use it. So first thing first with this, I'm gonna flip it over and you can see like all these seams are just going whichever direction. So I'm gonna try and use my mat to help us here. So I'm gonna start here and I'm not gonna push and glide, okay? We're going to truly press on our pressing mat, okay? Our pack of pressing mat. So there we go. I've got them all in the right area. I'm not sliding, I pick it up to move it e each time and so I wanna make sure and do that. Okay, so now this second one here, and I'm trying to get a good, do you see how those are sticking up? These seams here are sticking up. That's what I'm trying to get to change here. So I've got this first row done. This second row, I'm going to try and push down in the places I need it to move. Like this one right here is sticking up a lot. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my heat and press it down on top of, give it a little bit of, of weight of my hand, just a little push, move it a little bit more, and move it a little bit more here towards the end. Little, just wherever I see that it needs a little bit more help. Oh, cool, look at that. Already that's laying like so flat. Do you see the difference in these two versus this seam right there? It's laying so much more flat. Okay, so let's do this next one. I'm actually gonna flip it around. So this is now the side that we've already done. I'm gonna work on this side. So this, <laughs> this poor seam, it's going this way, it's going this way, it's going back this way again. So I'm gonna try and press it all the right direction here. And again, I don't want it to distort. So I'm gonna try and Press that over without gliding it. We'll see if that worked or not. Nope. Start at one end. Perfect, okay. Then I'm gonna come to this end and press a little bit. Hold it with my finger and press again. Oh, wonderful, except for this little bitty bit right there. Very nice. Okay, now I just have this middle to do here. And again, I'm just gonna press it down, not glide it or move it at all. All right, already these seams are looking like so much more flat. It's hard to get a good view of that. There we go. Cool. 
cool. This is fantastic. I am loving this. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give it a good press on the top. There's so much potential on the bias to distort your quilt square. And so I'm always looking for something to help stabilize it. Okay, so now that I have this on there, like I can pick it up and it's not going anywhere. If I turn it over, it does. But it's grabbing that fabric. Like that's phenomenal. I love this. I, you guys, I just love this. Okay, so I'm gonna put some starch on it and show you still. It doesn't do anything. It's not gonna change it at all. And again, I'm pressing, not gliding. Go this way. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And that is flat now. All my seams are going a nice direction. They're all laying really, really well, not like they were before, all cattywampus. And my quilt square looks so nice and it's starched. That's what I really like about this because I like, I, I'm tied to my starch, man, I really like it. Okay, so there's a quilt square, love that. Okay, so now we've got a cross stitch pattern or cross stitch piece. Now, typically what you would do is you would lay a towel on your ironing board. Vonna Pfeiffer talks about this a lot. Uh, you would lay a towel, fold it a couple of times over on your desk, or I'm sorry, on your ironing board. Then you would flip this upside down and then you would put a towel over top of this. And the reason you put a towel underneath is so that it doesn't flatten your stitches because a hard surface like an ironing board or a pressing board would kind of flatten your stitches. And we don't want to do that. We want to see the beautiful stitching. We want to see the uh, kind of three dimensional look of our stitches. So I've got my pack of pressing mat down here. This is pretty thick. Um, it's a really good thickness and there's a lot of give to that alpaca fiber. So I'm going to leave this upside down. I just happen to have a Jersey pillowcase. This is just a pillowcase. I think I picked up at Target for three or four dollars and I just fold it over a couple of times and I'm going to lay this over the top of my stitching. Okay. And you see like I had it folded in its project bag so it's not even it's not even very pretty. <laughs> so I'm gonna lay that down. And just like quilt squares, if you're not familiar with stitching, it has a bias as well. So we wanna make sure and not distort that. So I'm gonna lay my jersey pillowcase over the top. If you have a towel, that would work just as well. I just happen to have this laying around. And I'm gonna start at the corner and I'm going to let that heat penetrate the pillowcase into the stitching. And if you think that you have too many layers, like as you go, if you think there's just too many layers of your pillowcase or towel, you can unfold it. That might be the case for me here because this is a smaller project. But as I'm pressing, I am pressing firmly into this. And I want it to be really flat because when I finish it, I want it to be nice and crisp. So I'm really putting weight into my iron here. The nice thing about this is the, the Paca, I keep calling it alpaca, the Paca pressing mat, um, it's going to help your, your expensive irons last a lot longer. So I really like that. Okay, yeah, so this is barely even hot. So that means that I have too many layers going for my, uh, my pillowcase up here. So we're gonna lay that out again. All right. I'm gonna start again. Same thing, just uh, less layers. So now I've got two layers instead of four. And again, I'm not gonna glide or push. I'm just going to press, just like this. And the reason we don't wanna press directly onto our cross stitch uh, is goodness. We don't wanna burn it. We don't want to, um, some of the Fibers, depending on what thread you're using, they could have synthetic fibers in there. And you don't wanna melt them on top of your iron. You've worked so hard to make such a beautiful piece. You do not want to mess it up. And so uh, you do not wanna want to uh, iron directly on top of your stitched piece. 
So I can feel my stitching under there. I can feel that it's getting really pushed in. So this is really nice. I've been very spoiled with this pack of pressing that. I'll just tell you that. All right, let's take a look and see if we've got a good press out of that. Oh yeah, there's no seam anymore. There's a little bit of one right there. But let's look at our stitches. They're still so fluffy and nice. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna press it one more time because I haven't quite got that fold out of there yet. And this is where, because of that bias, you can get a little distorted. So you wanna fix it where you can. Press it down. There we go. There is some controversy on whether you should use starch on your cross stitch pieces or not. I do. Uh, I don't know that I would in an heirloom piece. I don't know that I would in an heirloom piece and I use very, very little. Let's put that back down. There we go. Man, that looks so nice. Okay, so like I said, this is the 15 by 15 size. I'm really loving this size. I have used the smaller one for smaller cross stitch uh, projects or if I'm just doing single quilt blocks next to my sewing machine, I'll use the smaller one. You do want to choose which side you're using and keep with that same side each time you're pressing. And like I said, you definitely wanna make sure you keep it in the bag. Thank you so much for joining us in the high today as we took a look at the Packa pressing mat. Like I said, we are gonna link Sue's information for What Have You Farm all down below. We'll list the website, her Instagram, and everything so that you can get in touch with her and order yours today. It's phenomenal, you guys. I've been using it for a few months and I absolutely love it. I would love to get, uh, cause she does do custom sizing. And so for my pressing mat, uh, I, for my pressing area, I would love to get a bigger pack of mat so that I can, oh, just have that whole area covered. That would be fantastic. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I really enjoyed trying this out and using it and just kind of hearing the story about the alpacas and what that family is doing for those older females uh, in their little retirement home. So thank you so much for joining us on the high today and y'all have a wonderful afternoon.